I think this is as big a deal as Watergate, as 9-11, and I think they should have a 9-11 type commission. Senate Democratic leader Harry Reid comparing Russia's interference in the U.S. election to American calamities and calling for a full investigation. And it's time now for our Sunday group GOP strategist Carl Rove, Fox News political analyst and columnist for The Hill, Juan Williams, president of the liberal think tank, the Center for American Progress, Neera Tandon, and Michael Needham, head of the conservative Heritage Action for America. Well, Neera, this is personal for you because in the leak of the Podesta email, some of yours came out. Yeah, a lot of mine came out, and it was covered, uh, it was covered often. And I think the truth of this is we've learned a lot over the last week. We've learned that the CIA uh, found that this was not just to undo democracy or hurt America, but was really designed for the Trump campaign. Uh, the CIA also has indicated that uh, Putin was involved, and then over the weekend we now have heard great consensus about this, which is the FBI agrees as well. And I think the real issue here is why there isn't more interest on the part of Republicans to find out what has actually happened. I agree with Reince Priebus. We need to know about the what, when, who, why, and where. And that's why we do need an investigation. We had 33 House committees and Senate committees on Benghazi. You think we could get one committee from the House to investigate this, and I don't understand why Paul Ryan won't put the interests of American democracy ahead of partisanship and call for an in, in, independent investigation into this. What did you make of Priebus's reluctance to accept the conclusion of the CIA and say he would like to hear directly from the FBI and the Director of National Intelligence? It's not the CIA, it's also the FBI. We've learned I don't understand it. I don't understand why they don't want to know. If there's questions about this, if there's no connection to this election, then let's get all the facts out. If he's so confident about the fact that this didn't help them get elected, then what do they have to hide? But even if the Russians were the CIA uh, conclusion is correct, or the consensus of the intelligence community, the and, the, and, the, and the Russian uh, hacking was done to interfere in the election and also to help Trump. Is it fair to hold Trump responsible for that? I hold him responsible for not wanting to give us the facts, to try to say there's nothing here, to throw, to attack, attack the intelligence analysts and the Central Intelligence Agency instead of trying to find out. That's what I hold him responsible for. I don't understand why, as president of this country, he will be president, why he doesn't want, to sh want to, us to know what happened here. What, it is what? a case the FBI was investigating. It is a case that during this election, the FBI was investigating Paul Manafort's role. It's his connections to Russia. I do not understand why, if they think everything is up and up, why they want to shift information, why they don't want to share this information. What? It does make people wonder what is going on. It, one more question before I bring everybody else in. Do you, what do you think of the effort by a number of Democrats to urge Republican electors to vote for someone else? Look, I think the most important thing here is really just getting the information about Russia. I know that there are a lot of electors who are interested in a lot of things going on here. I think, they, I think the request to have a briefing about this is a, an appropriate request. Carl. Uh, first of all, let's be clear. Uh, the CIA said Russia did not have, quote, a single purpose. That is to say, the, the idea that this was all about helping Trump, they repeatedly targeted, the CIA said, both parties trying to get into their systems. And only one and, was... And let me finish. <laughs> and they said that this was about, that a, a, a important part of the uh, Russian hacking was aimed at undermining confidence in the American electoral system. Now, this is much, I agree there ought to be an investigation about it. I agree that there ought to be. That's why it was astonishing to me that the CIA would not begin that process last week by giving a briefing to the House Intelligence Committee as requested. No, he it, let me finish. I didn't interrupt you. Sorry. Now, let's be clear. I love all the hyperventilation on the left that this somehow was responsible for Hillary Clinton's defeat. On October 6th, the day before the first WikiLeaks, she was at 48% in the Real Clear Politics average, and on Election Day, she got 48.8%. Oh, eight percent. Let's be clear what this is about. One, a coup. They're attempting to have 37 electors flip, which is not going to happen, 
or to throw it in the House of Representatives and somehow have 26 states, delegations, dominated, some of them dominated by Republicans, vote for somebody other than Donald Trump. Not going to happen. Let, let me, let me, wait, second, wait, wait, no, wait. Yeah. Let, me, let me bring in Nira. Is it a coup? It's absolutely not a coup. I don't, the question here is, can we just get information to the country? It's wrong. The CIA director reached out to Nunez, who would not take his call. The House absolutely, Intelligence yes, Director. Yes, he was on the Trump transition. He reached out to him last week. He would not take his call. And he, the issue and the here, Trump, and, the, and the, the CIA issue director is, would not respond to his invitation to come brief the committee, Democrats and Republicans. You, so I think we should get the information out. So do you do you want the House to hold a committee, uh, I, I, hold a hearing I, I on this, an independent the, I want, I want investigation, the, I want an independent I want bipartisan Congress, investigation? I want the Congress to do so in the right time, but I do not want it to be used right, as an excuse to delay the the constitutional process. This is an effort to delegitimize Donald Trump. I saw this happen in 2002 when Democrats went around saying Bush is not a legitimately elected president. Many of your same allies were out there saying the same stupid things. And with Don Breyer, who sat here, he was quoted in the Washington Post saying, quote, we're about ready to be saddled with, quote, an illegitimate president. This is all about undermining the confidence in the system. You know After what? all the pious oh. discussions about, oh, we've got to accept the outcome of the election, Donald Trump, the Democrats are now refusing to accept the outcome of the election and using this controversy, which, again, I point out, had no, at most, de minimis impact okay. on the election. Okay. I, I, I want to, I want to, no, we I got We can it. both agree. I think the truth is here. We, we now both agree that there should be an independent investigation, and that's great. Okay. <laughs> congressional investigation. During the third presidential <laughs> debate, I asked both candidates about their willingness to accept the results of the election. Here it was. Are you saying you're not prepared now to commit to that principle? What I'm saying is that I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. Well, okay? Chris, let me respond to that because that's horrifying. One, as you remember, at that time, Democrats were outraged at Donald Trump's response. But aren't they engaged, as, as Carl suggests, in exactly that now, refusing to accept the results of the election and trying to undercut the legitimacy of Donald Trump as our next president? Well, there's no question. Democrats run the risk of looking like hypocrites, given what happened at that expertly moderated debate in October. It, uh, pretty good. But, <laughs> but, I, but in fairness, you know, at the time, what was on the table was the idea of voter fraud, and it was being pushed by Republicans and Trump. Oh, there's so much voter fraud in the country that the race could be tossed to Hillary Clinton illegitimately. He could win the popular vote and be denied the, all this. That's what he was responding to. Now we're dealing with something else, which is about Russian interference in the democratic process and tilting the election and the news coverage uh, against Hillary Clinton and for uh, Donald Trump. So. When we come to the Electoral College now, you got to remember, the Founding Fathers, I just finished a book about the Founding Fathers. The Founding Fathers did not design the Electoral College to be a rubber stamp. To the contrary, they think the, electro the electors should have the capacity to exercise some discretion. Do I think that something's going to, a coup is going to occur tomorrow? Absolutely not. But it's not the case to say that it delegitimizes Donald Trump for people to ask questions. Well, Michael, you're well, a con... Democrats you're don't, don't run the risk of looking like hypocrites. The Democrats are, in fact, being hypocrites. There's a 0.0% .0 chance that the Electoral College tomorrow will not vote right. for Donald Trump as President of the United States. This is all a distraction. What we should be focused on right now is that Donald Trump is making spectacular appointments uh, to the United States cabinet. I think this may be the best cabinet uh, that the country has had, certainly in my lifetime. That is what the issue is at. The issue is that Donald Trump won an election because he connected with people who have real anxiety and that the Democrats would be better ser serving themselves if they spent their time talking about the economic anxiety that people in this country face. But, but wait, wait, wait. But I, I don't want to do just, I, I want to get out of the boilerplate here, Michael. You're, you talk a lot about constitutional principles when you're here on the, Is the electors <clears throat> and the idea that they might re-examine the whole question as to whether or not they support Trump, is that exercising constitutional principles? Sure, but there's no chance that Donald Trump will not be the president. I'm not asking about the chances. I'm asking about it, the principle. It is perfectly valid for the Electoral College to look at it. There is no chance that that will happen. It is possible that an asteroid might come out of the sky and also uh, change the outcome uh, of, of who's going to be sworn in on January 20th. The fact is that on January 20th, Donald Trump is going to be sworn in as president of the United States because tomorrow the Electoral College is going to elect him uh, president of the United States. I think you are should be focusing on the issues that our country has I, and not Mike, debating Michael and I that agree that, no that Michael and I agree that the Electoral College has the right to exercise some discretion to look and see whether or not this person is properly qualified. 
But I think what you're revealing, Michael, is an anxiety that somehow, because Trump did not win <laughs> the popular vote, lost by about three million, that people no would anxiety. delegitimize. That's what I, you and, and Carl are saying. Delegitimize. I'm focused on the policy achievements that are going to happen. Let me just assure you, <laughs> it's Obamacare, over. Which is a failing it's over. Law, Donald it's Trump. Oh, please. And I know that's disappointing. Donald, to you. No, <laughs> it, 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 if that happened, but what I'm saying, Donald Trump. I think everybody on this panel, including the previous panel, said Donald Trump is going to be put in position to be president of the United States exactly. tomorrow, but boy, okay. on the right, so such anxiety about, about his... Okay. It used to be that they gave us lectures on the original intent of the Constitution. I remember Michael and others talking about the original intent. If there is an original intent, it was that electors would deliberate tomorrow, on this election. Tomorrow, tomorrow, they, they, may, they, will love, <laughs> they will live up to that and uh, enter their judgment, and after tomorrow, because you respect the Constitution so much, I know you're going to welcome the new incoming administration as validated. And, by the and panel, we have, have to take a break here, but when we come back, you know, there is